I think most of you have met me before. Uh, my name is Teresa, or Teresa, if it's hard to uh, pronounce. Thank you. I would like this room to be quiet when I speak. Perfect. Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say something as a participant, because I come into these lectures as well as hold a few of them. And I think that it is, this is a very hard course. It's so much information coming at you the whole time, and it's just super, super intense. And one thing that we can all do to help each other is to, like you guys are right now, be on time and start on time. Uh, because once we start, you know, the whole, like, everything is 10 minutes late or 15 minutes late, you get into this mindset where everything, you, you, it's okay to be five minutes late, blah, 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 and everything gets kind of rushed, and it's not very good. But you guys are here on time, and I love it. So, let's talk about player motivation. Uh, maybe you should know, most of you know, uh, I work at the company Livevaxdaden, the LARP workshop uh, in Vesteros in Sweden. We design uh, educational games, mostly, a few that have no educational value whatsoever, but mostly educational games, uh, mostly for non-LARPers, so people who don't know how to LARP at all. They just come into the room, they have no idea what we're doing, and then we teach them to be LARPers and help them LARP. Uh, so that's, my, that's where I come from uh, when I speak. So, competitive versus collaborative. What does this even mean? <coughs> if you LARP competitively, I can beat you with this game. I'm going to be the best at this game. I will win, you will lose. Collaborative is a completely different approach. Let's create an experience together. It doesn't matter who, like, winning or losing, that's not interesting at all. We're building something together. Uh, also, something to keep in mind through this talk, there are two different aspects of the competitive versus collaborative LARPer, and that is the in-game aspect and the off-game aspect. Because I can play a game where my character is obsessed with winning, and it's so important to this person to win, but me as a player, I find it very interesting how my character fails. And, and to me, like, I'm playing this collaboratively. Uh, while if I play the game, and for me, for Teresa, it's so important for me that my character wins, otherwise I feel bad, then I am, as a player, being competitive. So I am going to use the words character for in-game and player for off-game. We are going to talk a little bit about competitive LARPing. And here are a few examples of what that might mean. Uh, In-game, this can mean collectives competing, like two groups competing. And in any LARP, this can be on many, many levels. You can have like a Russian doll, uh, you know, with a, a group inside the group, inside the group, inside the group. Maybe... Babushka. Yes, a babushka. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Not get into this. Okay. Um, so, um, you have maybe, well, you have the orcs versus the humans in a fantasy lark. But in the orc tribe, maybe you have different groups inside the tribe. Maybe you have different uh, groups inside the human village. And in those groups, maybe you have different groups. And you have, perhaps, groups that overlap. Maybe one group, uh, like we saw in, um, in uh, Eirik's presentation about... A character creation, or a playable character, they had the, was that the 1942, uh, where they had the, the character, and you have work, and family, and, and stuff. So those are different groups that overlap and don't, uh, they're not in the same category. Uh, apart from this, you can also have individuals competing. For instance, here we have a big race, and only one person can win. You can also have a competition within, uh, within 
like within the family, we can all compete uh, for whatever, for money or for, for who gets the attention at the dinner table or something. And then we have the off-game competitive LARPing. And this is where it gets a little bit shady. Uh, what I call an off-game system win is when I am best at the game. So uh, after the game, I say, I killed the most people with this game, or I have the most experience points, or whatever. Now, my character, of course, wants to win his or her battles, if there are battles, but they don't go around counting experience points. And they don't go around counting how many people did that random person over there kill. That's me as a player playing this as a game, like playing it as a computer game, maybe. Uh, that's what I would call a system win. And then you have the social win. I'm a LARP celebrity, it says. Uh, what I would have put, if there was room on, on the thing, is I'm the person <coughs> people will remember from this LARP. I'm the person who had the most interesting personality or the most, like, you know, that scene that everyone remembers. That's me. And this is a way to compete between players. Uh, and yeah, I think that's pretty clear. And then we have hacking. Now hacking, like hacking into a computer, you can also hack into a game. And in uh, When Our Destinies Meet, if you looked in the game on the page, they suggest changes that you can make and they call them hacks. Now if you, you can, this expression comes from or is used for people going to a LARP not really liking what the organizers are doing, not really liking what the designer was trying to do, or what actually ended up happening in the game, so they change it themselves. Maybe I say, well, um, my character is supposed to be, like, a, uh, they wrote me the character Aragorn from Lord of the Rings, and I happen to know that Aragorn is not a very playable character. So I decide that five minutes into the game, Aragorn gets stupid drunk. And now he is suddenly very sociable and talks to everyone. This was not the intention of the organizers, probably. But I am here to have a fun game. So that's hacking. And so this is actually a way for me as a participant, as a player, to compete with the designer, compete with the organizer. Because I, I am, in a way, saying I am the better designer here. I know better than you what works. So this is being competitive. So if we put this all together and make the world's most competitive LARP, uh, in this group, or in this, uh, in this LARP, all in-game groups compete for a prize that not everyone can win. Within these in-game groups, uh, and, and just so we're clear, an in-game group can be a designed group, like uh, the family, and we, it's written in to our characters that I'm the mother and you're the father, blah, 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 blah. But it can also be a group that happens. You know, there are a hundred adventures at this LARP, and we, five adventures, happen to end up together, because that's how <coughs> the play went. So, but within that group, there's no collaboration whatsoever. We fight, and we want to win <laughs> from, like, over each other. Within all in-game relationships, still more competition. Uh, you are competing with your wife, you're competing with your boss, you're competing with everyone. Also, off-game, every player wants to one-up all other players. And one-up is an expression that's a little strange, and that's why I put it in yellow. To one-up someone is to say, your friend says, I went for a vacation in, a, in another town. And then you say, well, that's nothing. I went for a vacation in another country. I just tried to one-up my friend. And this is something you can do in very many different ways. But that's what everyone is doing every way they can. They're trying to, to be better and kind of, you know, like, just getting to the other players. Every player in this game wants to be the main character. You have an idea that there can be one person who's the most interesting character in this game, and that's going to be my character. Uh, and, um, yeah. 
Good luck with that. Uh, also, every single player in this game is actively trying to outsmart the design. Because every player in this game thinks that they're a better designer than the designer. So they're changing everything around. This sounds like, to me, like a just horrible game. I would never in my life want to play this game. It's just, it just gives me a stomach ache just thinking about having to be in the same room as these people. Um, yes. So that's competitive. Let's talk about collaborative. Uh, this can be in-game, collaboration within groups. Like, in our LARP, we have orcs and we have humans, and all us orcs are going to work together to win the war. That's within the group. And then you have collaboration between groups. Say that the orcs and the humans uh, decide to build a bridge together over that wild river that no one can cross. Now there's collaboration between groups. So individuals are, of course, also collaborating all through this structure. And then we have off-game collaboration. So this is stuff that I as a player do, not as a character. Uh, playing to lose. How many of you have heard this expression before? Play to lose. Okay. The concept of playing to lose is that it's super fun when your character goes just down the crapper. It is super fun to play the scheming villain and then get killed in the end. It's super fun when someone like hits you with a buffer sword and you get to do the fantastic death scene. That's playing to lose. Like you intentionally, as the player, uh, make your character fail at their missions. And this is a way to make maybe someone else should win. Maybe this it's a better story somehow. Uh, and then we have something in Swedish. This is called spela upp which would mean play up. So you play up someone else's, like say uh, Frida is playing a little old lady, and I will magnify her traits, like the way she is, by always like standing up when she comes into a room and offer her a seat. Or I, I, even if she doesn't maybe play really clearly with her body that she's a weak old lady, I treat her like she is moving like a, a, an old lady. Uh, and this is something I do to make her LARP, like I make her character better. So I'm collaborating with her to make her seem cooler. Uh, and some players will do this, this, like whether it would be realistic or not. So I go out of my way to do something which my player or my character <laughs> perhaps wouldn't do if I was super 100% true to my character. Because I just think it will be a better LARP. Like, I see someone sitting over there being super bored and no one is talking to them and nothing is happening. So I go over and make conversation. And this is a player decision, not a character decision in this case. Even though my character wouldn't necessarily do this, I do it because I as a player want this game to be fun. Uh, and then we have, I guess, the opposite of hacking a LARP, which is actively supporting the designer's vision. So you try to figure out, maybe you ask, maybe you talk to the organizer or the designer of the game. You try to figure out what are they trying to do and then you just help. If this is supposed to be a horrible game about a hell dimension, then you just hell away. And if it's supposed to be a nice, fun, light game, you make sure you play it light and fun. Maybe you make up songs that are in the style of this game world or something. Uh, so this is... Competitive LARPing and collaborative LARPing. Now, we're going to do something different, uh, because you were all pretty zonked out. So, we are, uh, you need to have your feet on the floor for this thing. Uh, when I say rise, you will stand up. When I say sit, you will sit again. Okay? Okay. Rise. Sit. Rise. Yes. Are you a teacher? 
I am not a teacher. <laughs> yes. I uh, interact with 15 year olds who think they are the kings of the world uh, a lot of the time. And that's how you end up this way. Okay. Uh, we're moving on to the world's most collaborative game. This is just the most collaborative game ever made. Every group, we, I'm assuming there are groups in this LARP somehow, they are both written and played as well-functioning. Which means there's no, you know, there's no, everything just works, everyone gets along. I designed the game, or whoever designed the game did it for them to get along, and the players also play it this way. All groups in this game have common goals, they want the same things. No player will put their character ahead of the game. They will think what services the game, like what makes the game better, not what makes me look cool. No one will steal focus from someone else. And this is kind of a mirror image of uh, the person who wants to be the most memorable because that leads to play that is very attention grabbing. So I have to be the, the center of attention. And, and this might not be so fun for everyone else. At first, I was going to put no one is the main character, but then I kind of realized that it is absolutely possible for, I don't know, say 20 people to play a game which has a main character. But as long as everyone wants there to be one main character, that's fine, it's still collaborative. It doesn't have to mean that everyone does the same amount of things or has the same amount of focus. Uh, also, very, very importantly, everyone agrees what this game should be. We all have a perfect understanding of what we're trying to do here. What is the point of this game? How will it be played? What is, what is the, the, the central idea? And what is every little detail idea? Um, yeah. Very few games have no collaboration. Very few games have no competition. Uh, the Family and the Shop is written to be a very, very competitive game. It's supposed to be a LARP you can win. So it is all, all the in-game uh, qualifications, like everything in-game, makes it competitive. But for the Family Anderson to work, you need to play it in a very collaborative style. You need all the players, as opposed to the characters, to want to together make this game work. Uh, on the other hand, we can take um, Microscope, as uh, I think at least a few of the people here have played it now, which is a story building game. You make an epic story together. There are no winners, losers. You just, you just create stuff together because it's fun. But it is entirely possible to play Microscope in an extremely competitive manner as a player. Um, let's say that uh, I start using more and more difficult words because I want to show everyone that I'm so smart and that I'm more educated than someone else. Or maybe there's a competition who uses the cards in a more creative way or who, who uses the game more creatively. Um, so it doesn't necessarily go hand in hand and no game I've ever heard of in my life is just like just collaborative or just competitive. This is a big, big, big deal. The off-game aspect, like all the off-game stuff that people do, is so much harder to control than in-game. Because you can design a game that is made to be played collaboratively, but you cannot be in the head of every person. As a single designer, as a single person, you cannot make your players have different motivations in their hearts. As a game community, as a group of people who tend to go to each other's LARPs and who tend to design games for each other, you can try to make a culture of what you want to have. Maybe you want to have competitive play. Maybe you want to have collaborative play. So, moving along, why would I want to design for competition? What's, what's the point of doing that? I would say that 
First of all, it is very playable. And by this I mean that if you're going to play, especially with inexperienced LARPers, and I do this in my work all the time, we have competitive elements in our games, uh, because the, the, the idea of the competition is so ingrained in our culture, at least in Sweden, that everyone, like, we can have all, you know, you know, we have trolls and we have weird costumes and everything, and that's just like, mm, I don't get it. But then you see, oh, we're two groups, and we have to get the magical troll crystal first. And then they're like, oh, I know this game. And then they're in it. Um, it makes for very quick team building. The idea of us versus them, so that if our group has an enemy over there, it makes us feel like a group. So that can be very useful. Uh, many players enjoy competition, otherwise it wouldn't happen all the time. Uh, a lot of people think it is fantastic to just build your skills, become a better fighter, just try your, your talents against someone else. <coughs> also, and this is of course just a few things you can discuss for hours and hours and hours, uh, all the different ways, like why you would want to design for competition. Um, but the last one I've put up here today is that it might be part of your message as a designer. Perhaps you want to say something about competition. Perhaps you want to say something about um, something else that really has to do with competition. Like uh, the game Quimlingsland uh, had a lot of competition inside it. And this was a game where uh, the, the designers were very interested in discussing capitalism and how <coughs> capitalism works. And a key aspect of capitalism is competition. But why wouldn't you then? I mean, it sounds like all, all good. Well, actually, competition isn't as playable and as easy to do in the long term. Uh, an experienced player, they can make a conflict last forever. But an inexperienced player, they don't necessarily know what to do with themselves after a while, and it gets kind of boring and strange and weird, and they, they mean, yeah. it just, it's, it gets old. Uh, competition, in my experience, can very much hurt immersion, because the players, especially inexperienced ones who are not used to LARPing, they will think of this as a computer game, or they will think of it as that kind of game you play, where this is the game over here, and this is me, and I'm very safe over here, and I talk as I, I'm not really invested in my character being my character. I'm thinking about what does my character over there, what, what does he do to win or something, but I'm not feeling, oh, I'm feeling the, the feelings. I, I'm very invested probably in that way, but we're not creating a fantasy or a, a world together that seems real. Also, depending on how you do it, Competition may limit characters' social options, and that's a lot of strange words in there. Um, a social option, I mean, if I am at war, if we play two countries who are at war, it's going to be possibly difficult for me to have conversations and do stuff with like half the players of the LARP. Now, you can design around this, of course, but it's something to think about. Like, am I cutting characters off from any other characters? Uh, also, worst case, um, this way of designing can encourage off-game conflict in player community, like community like the people who usually go to the games. And you can have, if it becomes competitive, sometimes it just gets kind of nasty and people take it personally and it just is a bad vibe. Also, it can be in conflict with the designer's message. Like it just, it's not a good idea to try to communicate um, motherly love by a, a competitive game, perhaps. So, why do you design for collaboration? Well, it's interesting. It's an interesting challenge because most of the games that we play are about winning over each other, like defeating the other player. So it's an interesting challenge, especially to people who are kind of experienced gamers. They can really get into this, like, wow, this is a different thing. A lot of players don't enjoy competition. I know a, quite a few people who say that the reason I got into LARP is I really hate sports because it's all about who is good at it and who is bad at it, and I don't want to do that. I want to play together. And those people are not going to enjoy your competitive LARP. Um, again, might be part of the designer's message, 
also often eases the workload on the designer. And this is like an extremely competitive LARPs that would be, for instance, uh, many American mainstream LARPs that are very much like a, a big World of Warcraft game where you go around and you do quests and you fight the monster. Uh, they actually have referees in the game, and that's like a judge who comes in. So they have to have like five people who are just going around the LARP saying, yes, that was a hit. No, you missed. Because it's so important that no one cheats because it's so competitive. Uh, also, and this doesn't have to be true, but many, many competitive games are very puzzle heavy because people have to have something to compete about. You have to have something to do that you solve and then you have to have another thing and another thing and another thing and some poor schmuck has to write all the puzzles. Also, why wouldn't you? Well, the content, like what you have to use in your game, is less concrete. You can't really like, touch it. It's harder to understand, like, how, what, what am I supposed to do here? Uh, and this is extra difficult for inexperienced players who are not as good at what we call dry LARPing, which <laughs> is my character has no input, I am just vaguely interacting. This is a nice inn we're sitting in. Let's have some wine and sing a song. Uh, it demands a higher level of consensus among players. The players have to agree more about what we want to do here. Also, again, can be in conflict with designer's message. I am almost done with this presentation, but I want to impress upon you the very important thing that this fader, the player motivation fader, can be designed to move mid-game. That means that you don't have to have a game that is competitive from beginning to end. You can change this. Uh, we do this a lot with children's games that are... Um, it's, it's not the most subtle thing, it's not the most you know, nuanced, but we have a game that is about um, trolls and fairies in the forest. And in the beginning, they are competing against each, against each other, and then somewhere in the middle of the game, they realize that this is just really stupid and not very productive. And the, the grown-ups, the NPCs, the non-player characters, they keep trying to compete. And the kids have already understood, like, this is, you're, you're just being stupid now. Uh, and they start collaborating, because that's how the game is designed. Uh, so then we try to have it both ways. We try to both get them into the game with the competition, and then get them to get into role-playing and get into their character after a while, when competition gets old. So, this and many, many more things, because this is a huge, huge fader, which you can just talk about it forever and ever, and what is competitive and what isn't. Um, but this is what I have to say today. And I think, uh, let's see, how much time, is there time for the game? Or should we just take questions? Yes, we play it. I think I just got two different signals here. <laughs> Are we going to play the boring yes. family game? Yeah. Ask them to just go to the same room as last time and we play it with them. Okay, thank you Bye. very much.